In today's video, I'll answer your question, what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Then afterward, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. In an extended practical teaching on holy living, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through chapter 5, verse 21, the Apostle Paul tells believers, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. His command not to grieve the Spirit falls under Paul's initial instructions covering what not to do to cultivate holiness and walk in Christian purity. The Greek word translated as grieve in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 means to cause to feel sorrow, pain, unhappiness, or distress. As the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit has a personality and the ability to feel emotions like joy in Luke chapter 10, verse 21, outrage, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29, and sorrow, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. In Acts chapter 7, verse 51, Stephen condemns resisting the Spirit. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, Paul instructs believers not to quench the Spirit. But the only time grieving the Spirit is mentioned in the New Testament is here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Paul's command not to grieve the Spirit seems to be inspired by two Old Testament verses that speak of God's Spirit being distressed and grieved in Isaiah chapter 63, verses 9 and 10, and made bitter in Psalm chapter 106, verse 33. In both Isaiah chapter 63, verses 9 and 10, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, grieving the Holy Spirit is associated with God's people having an inappropriate response to his redemption. Do not grieve the Spirit appears to complement Paul's opening exhortation to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Believers grieve the Spirit when they do not maintain peace and harmony in the body of Christ. Paul then gives specific ways we grieve the Spirit by living as we used to before our salvation when we were separated from the life of God. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 19. We grieve him when we don't speak truthfully to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 25. When we let anger control our actions. Verses 26 and 27. When we steal from each other. Verse 28. And when we speak foul and abusive words to one another instead of uplifting and encouraging words. Verse 29. We also grieve the Spirit when we don't get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior, verse 31, and when we fail to be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you, verse 32. The Holy Spirit of God lives within the Christian, John chapter 14, verse 17. We are his temple, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and when we don't walk in the holiness and love of Christ, and in harmony with fellow believers, we grieve the Spirit of God with our sinful thoughts and behaviors. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 21. Grieving the Holy Spirit is similar to quenching the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, in that both negatively impact the believer, the church, and the world. Quenching the Spirit speaks of stifling or suppressing the fire of God's Spirit that burns within every believer. The Holy Spirit desires to express himself in our actions and attitudes. When we do not allow God's Spirit to be seen in our behavior, when we do what we know is wrong, we suppress or quench the Spirit. We do not allow the Spirit to reveal himself as he wants to with love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. Both quenching the Spirit and grieving the Spirit hinder a godly lifestyle. Both happen when we sin against God and follow our own worldly desires, living as we did before accepting Christ's salvation. The only correct road to follow is the one that leads the believer closer to God and purity and further away from the world and sin. Just as we do not like to be grieved and just as we do not seek to quench what is good, we should not quench or grieve the Holy Spirit by refusing to follow his leading. 
Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There you'll find one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.